I think we should start with the background a little bit. The whole motivation behind all this is uh, working for Simon's Observatory. We're uh, commissioning one of the first major elements of the small aperture telescope camera element. And a big part of that uh, system is cryogenics, and that is cooling things down to extremely low temperatures uh, for a variety of reasons, but mostly for us, it's the sensitivity that we gain from uh, these extremely cold temperatures, as well as some of the superconducting technology that we use in our detectors. Now, it used to be that we'd make a lot of these um, cooling processes, these refrigerators ourselves, but that's quite complicated. Uh, takes a long time, often doesn't work, or it takes a while to get to work. So we're in this fabulous new era where we can buy many components uh, commercially available, including the one that we have here today that we're commissioning uh, for the first time ever. And what it is called is it called a dilution refrigerator, and it mixes a, uh, has a mixture of helium-3 and helium-4, which it uses to cool down to the base temperature we're hoping to get to today for the commissioning is below seven millikelvin. So seven thousandths of a degree Kelvin or somewhere in the neighborhood of four, negative 460 Fahrenheit. And in order to do that, we need a <laughs> number of fairly complicated pieces of machinery. But the heart of it is this guy right here, which doesn't look like a whole lot right now because it's closed and under vacuum. But it's, uh, if you were to open this up, you'd see a kind of a platform here, a platform here, a platform about there, and a last platform somewhere around this region. And each one of those is a different temperature stage, and each one of those has a shell that extends from it to effectively insulate the coldest layers. So up at the top in that pulsing sound you hear, that's the pulse tube and it cools a stage to around 30 or 40 Kelvin, and it cools another stage to around four Kelvin or three or four Kelvin. Below that is where you start getting into what this company, Blue Force, really specializes at, which is a cooling circuit that goes down here, and that's where a lot of the plumbing comes from. And that cools down a stage to about one Kelvin, and then the coldest stage, which can at its coldest get below seven mil Kelvin. I keep saying that number just because that's the number the thermometer we have is calibrated to. Probably gets a little bit colder, but we won't know because we don't have that calibration. And the reason we don't have that calibration is because our sensors, our camera operates at closer to 100 mil Kelvin. And basically you get to slightly higher temperatures on each of those stages, the more power you put on them. So our camera electronics will put on enough power to bring this up closer to 100 mil Kelvin for operational temperatures in Simon's Observatory. So this is the main heart of the whole Blue Force setup, the actual dilution refrigerator component that gets cold, but there's a lot of pieces around it that make it run. So the, one of the first parts is our electronics here. Are you able to see that? Yeah, you're able to see it. So this is the electronics. This is from a company called Lakeshore, and it is a, a, essentially a very precision electronics instrument that allows us to read out these very cold thermometers. Now you might not think of a thermometer as particularly complicated, but when you're trying to read out these extremely cold temperatures, it gets quite challenging to have the a kind of stability in the measurement, to make the measurement without heating up the thermometer itself or causing other effects and noise and so forth. So you have a, a series of special electronics as well as a special material in the thermometer itself to read these cold temperatures. I can read it right now. We're getting close. We're at just below 20 millikelvin, which is crazy how cold that is. It's right there. Like I'm a few inches away from 20 millikelvin. It still blows my mind. I've been doing this for years. It still blows my mind that I can do that. And uh, we're trying to get down to below seven, so we're getting close. Um, so that's how we know we're getting cold. Then there's a number of other components. Uh, first is here. I'm just trying to explain that this is like a car. We got a twin turbo set up here uh, to run this. And what this is doing is pulling the helium mix out of it to cycle it out of the system. And that pulls, um, you need quite a bit of kind of, not suction, but you need quite a bit of vacuum uh, pulling capability. So underneath this table are two turbo molecular pumps, which can get pressures, I think, as low as about a millionth of an atmosphere or so. They're very powerful pumps. We want to make sure that all the helium-3 that's in the system is continuously circulated and never escapes. So it's also got a safety, set, uh, safety measures in it to make sure that we don't lose any of the mix and that we don't provide any dangerous pressures anywhere in the system. So once the helium mixture comes out through here, out through this pipe, goes through a circulation set there, and then comes back in on what we call the condensing line, which is this much smaller diameter line here, 
And so right now in, in my hand is helium-3 and helium-4 mixture shooting back over here, back into the DR, and going back into the mixing chamber where it will um, provide the mixing effect that allows the dilution refrigerator to cool down. This right here is a compressor that does a lot, it's kind of the, the workhorse of it. Uh, so I mentioned the pulse tube is a separate component from the Blue Force Dilution Refrigerator, which cools down to a 30 and 40 Kelvin stage and about a three or four Kelvin stage. Um, and it does that using a, basically gradients and helium pressure that are backed by this compressor unit uh, that requires, uh, <laughs> gives me a lot of uh, angst, I guess, in getting it to run because it requires a high voltage to run. It uses a lot of power, so it's one of the main drivers in our power requirements at the site. So right now it's using somewhere between 10 and 14 kilowatts to run that thing and keep it cold. Um, and it also requires cooling water, which you can see in these two pipes. There's a continuous flow here. I can actually feel the pipes and they're warm. And I can look at here and it tells me that the water in is at 19 degrees C and the water out is at 32 degrees C. Uh, so just between these two pipes is over a 10 uh, degree C change in temperature. And I can do that in Fahrenheit because of course this is made with uh, the metric system in line, but our thermometry on the wall is actually made with our uh, imperial system in mind. And you can see the water coming out of here is about 90 degrees, whereas I know going in it's about uh, 50 or 60 degrees. So it's, it's a lot of power you have to remove, and if you don't do that, it will shut itself off from overheating. So we have to continuously run this water loop and that power to keep the cooling continuous on the Blue Force and provide it those first temperature stages and those first temperature shields.